and share my screen. Everybody see that? Yep. Yep. Sweet. Okay, great. Well, thanks for for joining. We we did this call one. We did this call yesterday. Um, just because, as I, I think I mentioned in the um Google groups, we had a real split with uh, a lot of people saying that yesterday at noon Eastern worked for them, and then a, you know a significant bunch of other people saying that today. So I just figured we would do we do it twice. Um, record both of them, and you know, and I'll just decide which one to publish. Um, uh, just as a reminder for housekeeping, um, the meetings are recorded. I published the agenda on the Google Groups. Um, uh, and, you know, like like all activities, uh, FreeBSD related, whether it's the project or the foundation, um, they're covered by our, our code of conduct. So I, 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 don't, I don't think we're going to have an issue, you know, um, but I think it's important to just it's always helpful for me to remind, to be reminded and uh, to, to remind folks that, um, you know, we, we can get passionate about our beliefs and, you know, the directions that we think we need to go, but it's, it's important for the health of the community that we all, um, you know, operate according to these, uh, these guidelines. Hey, Johannes, thanks for joining. Hi, Greg. Hello, everybody. Yeah. Hey. Dialing in from Germany, it's a bit. It's getting into the evening for you, so appreciate. Yeah, it already you. is. <laughs> it's, it, yep. So we appreciate you sticking around and joining us. Of course, of um, course. So, as a as a, just a quick reminder to kind of what we agreed to uh, last time we met, right? Um, this is sort of the one of the big ones, I think. Uh, there was a couple things that we talked about last time, several things that we talked about. But the one of the big accomplishments, I think, milestones for this group anyway, was sort of saying, okay, this is what we're gonna do. Um, and you know, and and I've had a few conversations, kind of like you know, out of band, and and I want to make sure that we're all really clear that because I guess this term enterprise can have a variety of different meanings, right? When I say enterprise, I don't mean vendor. I don't mean company that takes FreeBSD and then uses it as a base to build something. Now, it's not to say that the things that this group is gonna be focused on might not also be relevant to them, but I see that as being different. And the, one of the big, and so as I thought about that and I thought about like, what is different about that? And please chime in anybody, you know, I'm. I don't hold myself out as an expert, especially among this community. Uh, I'm still very much the, the newcomer. Um, but to me, it's really, and, and I tried to highlight that with those two words, general purpose, right? So like, if you're, if you're building an appliance, a security appliance, a networking appliance, a storage appliance, you have a very specific workload in mind, right? And so the operating system is going to be tuned to that, right? And so in, in a use case like that, typically you're going to have the engineers needed to, you know, do that tuning. And your requirement, like what you need to support is fairly controlled, right? In a general purpose server environment, you have, there's a lot of variables that you don't necessarily control. What you know, what is your sort of uh, top sort of people in charge going to say they want you to use for uh, for like um, for like, you know, well, Active Directory is the specific, but, you know, for that type of capability, um, you know, what types of desktop environments are you going to support? Um, what different business unit applications are you going to need to support, right? What are they written in? Are they on premise? Are they cloud? Is it a combination? What does your sort of uh, general purpose server need to be able to do in order to support that diversity of uh, of business applications? So, so that's kind of really uh, the the specific commercial downstream use case that this group is is focused on. Um, is that is that is that everybody on the same page there? Like is that. Does that logic make sense? Would people take issue with the way I'm thinking about it? It does. Okay, cool. All right, sweet. Um, 
So anyway, I'm not going to read the rest of it, but I, I, I just thought that that, would, that was an important one, just given because it's come up a couple times. And I just wanted to make sure that I was being clear about what, what I was kind of thinking uh, and, um, and that my thinking makes sense. So it sounds like it does, and that, that's good to hear. So, so where do we stand? Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm really excited about the progress that we're making. Of course, now we're really getting to the hard work, but you know, we're, we're plugging along here. And I've, based on the, the call that, I've had two calls now. There was the call that we did yesterday, the, the first enterprise working group meeting number two. And we had a call earlier in the week where we talked about a couple of the uh, different um, feature gaps. And I, I think some plans are starting to take shape. There's still plenty of work to do, but, but at least I think we know what, what the next step is uh, on some of these. I'm feeling pretty good about that. Um, and, uh, and so, yeah, so really the, what we wanna do on this call is uh, these are the, the feature and the infrastructure gaps that we agreed to after our um, meeting, uh, our first meeting. And so then I sent out the poll and uh, you know a bunch of people weighed in on which of those feature and infrastructure gaps they felt were most important uh, and how hard each of them they thought would be. So let's uh, go ahead and take a look. And so I have, you'll see in the discussion just some of my notes from, from the meeting yesterday. So you don't have to worry about that. I can explain what I meant, but um, to me, and I shared the slides, so many of you have, may have already looked at these, right? But what, what was very interesting is it wasn't even close. Like cloud native, you know, uh, native OCI runtime for FreeBSD and kind of, you know, really making sure that FreeBSD is a, uh, easy option for anybody who wants to use it in a kind of OCI spec cloud native environment um, is the most important, right? And, uh, and by, by, a, by a good margin. Um, but it was also the second most difficult. <laughs> so um, I have a detailed slide on that where I list out the you know, the, the good news, which is that there are eight at least active sort of uh, experimental projects that different people uh, are working on that attack kind of different parts of the develop, deploy, run, orchestrate workflow, um, uh, you know, that are, that are connected with jails that are, you know, just sort of like run J, there's OCI jails, there's just a, a, a number, there's XC that Alan, you brought up um, on, at the last meeting. So there's a bunch of people focused on this and there are folks who have raised their hands. So many of you will know John Hickson um, from the IX days, who's now uh, at, a, uh, at Red Hat. And he said, hey, you know, I, 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 I'm busy, but if I can help, uh, I would like to, and he's actively working on development uh, in in the cloud native space. So we've got a a, a little sort of nucleus of a team kind of coming together. So that's pretty cool. Um, and then you see the other ones here. I I guess the only one that surprised me a little bit was the NVIDIA GPU support. N not not that it isn't important, but I I wasn't expecting it to be uh, as important as it showed up for the general purpose enterprise server workloads. Um, but I, I think that that was influenced fairly heavily by the fact that we have a significant number of folks in the scientific HPC community participating in this work group. And, and clearly it's a, it's a key um, capability for them. So let me, let me shut up and see if, you know, anybody has any questions or comments or thoughts or Anything, um, you know, do, do, does anybody think that those perceived uh, difficulties are, are way off? You know, the wisdom of the crowd can be a good guide, but, you know, you don't, you don't always want to necessarily, you know, trust it 100%, right? Um, I, I will say that I was the one also that voted for the GPU support just because of the HPC and the mm -hmm. AI work that we do consistently. I think that mm -hmm. 
a lot of folks that I talk to, you know, especially within the data science, data engineering realm, right, like BSD, but that's a determination, like that's a factor of like, okay, does the GPU work for retraining models or for, you know, any of the CUDA development that we can do, yep. right? Yep. So. Cool. Thanks for that color. I appreciate that. Um, Yep. Sweet. What other thoughts? No, I'm not sure I'm on the perceived oh. difficulty on that. Like, I suppose it really depends on what approach is taken as well. Hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah. Meaning, like, does does Nvidia provide resources to yeah to support that versus not? Exactly. Yep. Yeah, I mean, and you know, look, I've I've been in this role uh, since April, so I'm still fairly new. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and you know, the sense that I'm getting, and this is probably going to sound incredibly obvious to you guys, is that it's it's like a conversation. It's not like a fixed thing. Like none of the companies that I've been talking to about getting more engaged with FreeBSD from a development standpoint have said, forget it, like, no, nah, don't want to. Like, it's, it's, a, it's a conversation, right? It's a, it's a process of kind of, and, and I think part of it is because there's, you know, the, the role that I have of working with the downstream commercial ecosystem, and in this case, the upstream sort of hardware ecosystem, um, you know, is something that has been done by a number of people across the foundation over time and different people at different times. And so the, the benefit of having, you know, one person, whether it's me or anybody else focused on that is um, the ability to just, you know, not get pulled into, you know, a number of other things and just to be to be able to sort of maintain consistent focus on it um because you know it it just you know i'll i'll be emailing into the wind with nothing hearing back from anybody and then you know out of the blue get an email saying oh hey let's pick up on this we had a little bit of a change in our team and we want to refocus on this right so I don't know. Maybe that's all very obvious to you guys, but it's been a bit of an eye opener to me because, you know, kind of coming in new to this role, I didn't know what to expect, right? Um, so, uh, but yeah, I mean, hear you loud and clear. I think you're you're totally right. It will very much depend on how. Um, any other thoughts? Maybe we can, oh, sorry, someone just come off mute. I okay. think it's a very special or dedicated uh, surface area for FreeBSD, the, the HPC um, thing. Um, I, I think in the most, when we talk about enterprises, big companies using FreeBSD, I think the most uh, common use case is, is the, the hosting of, of certain applications. Yeah. Um, um, not to say that that is uh, not important or not relevant. I'm just mm -hmm. I'm just trying to to figure out to what proportion um, that this is uh, relevant in the overall enterprise context. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, I think that that's fair. I mean, you know, I, I will say that uh, AI comes up all the time, yeah. right? And and if you, you know, it's very difficult to make a case to anybody that they should use your platform if you can't use CUDA with it, right? Um, to, in an AI uh, application. So I, 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 I don't. I mean, I was surprised, but but I, but I'm, but I don't. But it's not. 
it makes sense to me. Like I understand. And I, and I yeah. think, you know, Jason, Jason's point about, you know, the, um, you know, training models and, and that kind of thing. It's, it's like, yeah, that's, that's the workflow. Right. And you, you have to fit into that. Um, and to do that, you know, we, we really need to, um, improve this, but, um, anyway. yeah, and just jump on that just quickly. Right. So, you know, a lot of things that we're seeing from, uh, the HPC community, you know, and also the, the data science and machine learning community, um, you know, security obviously is number one, right? Data privacy, you know, all the way down to you know, the operating system. They want to make sure that's secure. Hence why they're looking at BSD for its robust security mm -hmm. features. Yeah. Um, you know, so having something like, you know, like you said, like an application, you know, like most of the time applications are being hosted out of BSD. Well, the same concept can happen within these AI models as well, right? So we train them with proprietary data, but then we can host them out of BSD, right, with all the security features that it comes with, um, you know, and then also maybe take advantage of ZFS or like jails and such of that way of like how you want to build the stack. But, you know, from that point, it's also great from the DevOps side, because then it's like a set and forget. They don't constantly have to worry about, you know, the underlying OS of like all these different things. Maybe there's a patch here and there, right? It's a lot more stable and secure compared to maybe some of the, you know, other operating systems. But I think that's what they're looking for, because, you know, a lot of the folks are really worried about, you know, I had a customer ask me, hey, if, you know, I train this GPT model um, and my competitor gets it, you know, what's stopping my competitor from asking, hey, how does, you know, how does so-and-so make money or give me their secret sauce of their application, right? You know, and these are real questions that we're getting from like Fortune 10, Fortune 50, Fortune 100 companies. Mm -hmm. Yeah, oh, okay, I got it. Yeah, that's interesting, and probably the 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 relevance of of this uh, topic will increase over in the near future. That's that's perfectly possible. Yeah. 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 Fantastic. Great. Well, I'm really glad this is being recorded because I know my notes uh, didn't capture all of that. But um, thank you very much. Um. Okay. So. Uh, if, so then what I did is I took the top three and I have a, a detailed slide for each of the top three, right? I, all the other slides are still in there. In fact, like, you know, even though Samba, for example, isn't in the top three, a volunteer raised their hand and said, hey, I, you know, I've done some work on Samba. I know Jeremy Allison. I can see what I can do to help get some of our patches upstream. So, I mean, we've got some comments in there, but I thought for purposes of the meeting, we would we would focus on the top three for now, um, just since we have limited time. So going in order, then uh, kind of cloud native K eights. I should probably put OCI in there. Um, everybody has these, and I and I apologize. This is a, probably a pretty bad user experience, but you know each of these links will take you to the projects that I'm aware of anyway. So you've got Run J in there, yeah, Run J in there, you've got OCI jails in there, you've got like another project that um, Doug Rabson is working on that uh, involves Podman and 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 FreeBSD and OCI. Um, there's uh, like a fork of Kubernetes that runs on Ill Illumos and FreeBSD and a couple other BSDs. XC is in there. Right, so we've got all this stuff that's being worked on. And so when when we met earlier this week and we talked a little bit about this, what, what seemed to make sense to me would be to think about doing this work sequentially, where the very first thing we would do would be a very simple one to two page product requirements doc, where as a as a group, we would sort of say, you know, when we're done, this is how this is what we would like the user experience to be for somebody who's you know wants to run an OCI uh, compatible you know container runtime on FreeBSD. These this is sort of what we want it to look like, because then we can we can move to assessing the various approaches and say which one or ones if any, seem to get us closest to that set of features that we've defined as being necessary. 
And then we can say, okay, now we know what we need to do. Um, let's, you know, and I'm, I'm more than happy to do it, uh, but I don't need to be the one to do it. Let's approach the respective maintainers and, um, you know, talk to them about what's the best way to work with them, right? Um, some of them may be wide open to patches and feedback. Others might be, I'm super constrained, but if you want to fork and run with it, go for it, right? We have no idea. Um, but I don't think it makes sense for us to dive straight into that phase <clears throat> um, before we do this, you know, just a little bit of prelim work. Um, so uh, when, when I presented this yesterday, folks sort of gave it the thumbs up and said, yeah, that makes sense. Um, I've, I've got like a little PRD template uh, that um, I'm more than happy to sort of help start to fill in, but really I think the best people to fill that in would be the end users that want this feature. Right, because um, you guys know what you want. Uh, what do you think? I think that you lack an answer from my side. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, I, not. I, I, I mean, I, I would love to hear from you, but I, but I don't, I don't mean to like throw it at you, right? Um, we can, you know. I think there's a number of people who can help with this. I will. I will get <clears throat> back to you within the next two days. I will try to to to, um, yeah, I'll answer your mail and and um, yeah, drop Let some me know. thoughts on. Yeah, and I can and like I can help, right? I can help coordinate, but you know, you don't want me filling out the PRD. I'll tell you that right now. <laughs> so, um, uh, so anybody who would like to help with that. Just you know, raise your hand in some fashion. You can send me a private email. You can put a message on the Google Groups, like in whatever fashion is easiest for you. Uh, if that's something that you feel like you could assist with, uh, I really don't think that this is a super heavy lift, right? Uh, I don't intend for this to be, you know, five pages of details. I really think it's, you know. We would like, you know, I've I've deployed a, you know, container on a, you know, I've got a VM set up and I've got Linux on there and I've deployed an OCI compatible uh, container environment on it. And this is the process that I went through, right? And this is what we would like to be able to see in a FreeBSD yep. environment, for example, right? Like, I, I don't think we need to reinvent the wheel too, too much here. But I do sure. think it would be important to do that so that, you know, because John Hickson has, has sort of indicated that when it gets down to like testing uh, and documenting these existing approaches, um, you know, that, that he would be more than happy to help with that. And, you know, and uh, hopefully there'll be others who, who can do so as well, right? We have a standard testing protocol and document, you know, documentation template that we just run them all through. That way we can very easily divide and conquer, right? And we can end up at the end with, you know, um, a, a test, you know, a sort of test report, a POC report, if you will, on XC, you know, and another one on OCI jails and a third on run J and all three could have been done by different people, but they'll, pro they'll provide the same information. Yeah, I'm fully with you. I think that's exactly what we need to do, that we take a look uh, at each project that is already there so that we don't reinvent the wheel and then, uh, yeah, try to figure out what fits the most, what fits the best and uh, yeah. pull, pull the trigger on that one and, um, yeah, yep. keep on going with, with one mm -hmm. of them. Yeah, yeah, and I, and I already know, that's great. I'm glad to hear that. I mean, I already know that, like, Sam Carp, who wrote Run J, and Doug Grabson, who wrote OCI Jails and other things, uh, they've been talking about how they can work together and start to merge those two, right? So it, it may end up being the case that there's a couple, right? That we like certain things from one and certain things from another, or you know, this one really does something very distinct, but it's very valuable, right? Um, so 
uh, yeah, well, we can cross that bridge when we come to it, right? We don't need to figure that out now, but um, uh, all right, good. Any other thoughts on this one? Then we can move. We can move on. Okay. Uh, so the second one was the uh, Active Directory and DNS integration. So we talked about this. Um, uh, Michael, who's here, um, uh, offered to kind of, you know, make to sort of participate in a quick meeting, right, where we invite a handful of folks. Anybody here who would like to join, you know, just say so, and we'll include you. Um, uh, to, to just kind of like scope this out a little bit, like, you know, what's the current status, you know, where do we want to be? What sort of, what, what are kind of the, 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 the hanging chads, if you remember that from the 2000 election, God, I'm aging myself. Um, like the little dangling pieces that we need to uh, clean up to get this done. Um, so, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, again, same, same process. You can you can send me a private email. You can you know, sort of raise your hand now and say, "Yeah, I'm more than happy to be part of that conversation." Uh, you can post on Google Groups, uh, or you can just kind of track the conversation. But um, <clears throat> that's kind of what we're thinking here. And thanks again, Michael, for agreeing to to sort of spearhead that. Um, Uh, all right, so now NVIDIA GPU support. So what I'm going to do is make that smaller. Go up here. Copy. Paste. Um, okay, so we have we have some notes here. Um, I mean, you know, I've had a few conversations with folks at NVIDIA, uh, and I think that there's there's not no interest or ability, right, in in helping out here. Um, there's more than none, <laughs> um, but but it's probably not enough yet to like make it a reasonable lift for the community is the sense that I get. Um, so, uh, you know, I, I feel like I, I do genuine, I, I, I believe that they are being completely genuine when they say it's really market driven, right? Um, so, you know, it's not always easy or obvious to figure out how to provide feedback that a feature is wanted. But there are there are ways to do that, um, and there are some forums where uh, I have seen a number of people requesting FreeBSD support um, for CUDA and for some other things. You know, the problem is like you know they they get it gets to a certain point, and then they're like, well, we've kind of already told you what we're going to say on this, and then they close it. So like, if you want to do it again, you got to reopen it. Um, but I think that's sort of something that anybody who feels so inclined can can do. And if you uh, look around for the right place to provide that input and can't find it, just ping me and I'll and I'll I'll share it. And actually, what I'm going to do right now is so I'm going to take a note for myself, Greg, to post on Google Groups the links to provide feature requests to and um, but you know I'm also going to continue those conversations so it um, you know to see if it, if we can get like a a sprint you know kind of a, a response out of them where we can knock some of this stuff out of the way fairly quickly. It's, somewhat, it's a somewhat like a chicken and egg problem. NVIDIA says there is not so much demand, and people say I'd like to use FreeBC, but there is no CUDA support. So, uh, which one should come first, NVIDIA or, or, or the demands from the users or the companies? Yeah. 
Well, sure. I think, you know, the more that they hear people say, hey, I, you know, I really want to use and I and I love the feedback, Jason, that you provided. That's super, super helpful because it's, you know, and the more that we can sort of say, you know, and, and clearly like, you know, there are privacy concerns and I completely, totally understand and respect that. But the more that we can say, like, here's a company that, you know, has the potential to order X number of uh chips and uh you know real for the following reasons really wants to be able to host these applications on freebsd right um and then i can broker that conversation right but it's it doesn't it you know there's only so much i greg wallace can do by like you know contacting the people that i that i have been in touch with over there um the more that we have that coming from uh, you know people who would be customers, the more impactful it is. Um, but it, you're right. I mean, Zoran, clearly, right? Like, I think, and and I and I really appreciate your uh, input at the last meeting on this topic, and you know, the offer to you know be a champion for FreeBSD. It's um, <clears throat> uh, it's it's really wonderful, right? And and I want to get to a place where, you know, you have that um, that ability to really champion FreeBSD because you know it's obviously very much in in my and I think everybody's here's interest. Uh, just to add, um, just to mention, uh, we have a lot of new uh, GPU cards which is not validated with the many systems and uh, mm -hmm. not with the many drivers. We are really, really struggling. But asking for those systems, especially X13, is enormous, huge. And that is the opportunity. If now, for example, customer is asking, which one can test? Can we test Ubuntu? Most of this goes to Ubuntu. And I have a chance now, even tomorrow, I get 421 GU, it's a brand new. I can start and I can support with the errors, which can help to develop any drivers. But also, if I know that it's, uh, if it's working, uh, I am the one who is the responsible for most of the POCs, actually for everyone, POCs. Mm -hmm. And um, I can, I mean, it's really hard to get those uh, from NVIDIA because yep. the, we are the only one super micro right now in 23, we are the only one who can sell that. Actually, we are ironing and we are trying to iron the drivers so that later on can get in Dell and uh, HP. So it's a really big market for that and a big chance for the Mm -hmm. Huge customer for the special yeah. the HPC AI, and I'm really to support. I mean, mm -hmm. I'm up to it. To to to. Yeah. I I I'm not guaranteed that I can get right now everyone GPU because even customer ordered in in order to get one from Nvidia. Nvidia even doesn't have. Yeah, but yeah. I've been reading that. You know what I mean? And, mm -hmm. and market is marketing is so huge. And um, um, I'm really, except Ubuntu, I'm the one I can try testing FreeBSD because honestly, ZFS is, uh, is a huge interest, especially for HPA. And um, um, there is no chance I will participate. I, I really like it. So um, mm. from my side, I, I, I'm up to what we have. It's really hard to get the GPU. And yeah. most of them is the US, but I have a contact in the US also. And uh, in a Taiwan uh, for the mm -hmm. labs, um, uh, uh, they are updating with the, uh, with the uh, testing with the drivers. So, uh, sure, I can I can help. Uh, okay, as much as great. I can. Yeah, yeah I well, also like that's... that. I can also help as well, uh, but on the Azure side, right? So I have access to literally every Azure instance known to man. <laughs> so more than happy to spin up all of them and test it out. Fantastic. Um, that's great.
Great. I mean, this all, all of this helps, right? Because it's, you know, it's not just me going to NVIDIA saying, you know, please do all this work. It's me going to them and saying, and this is how this community is going to, you know, work with you to enable the support that they want. Um, so this is great. Thank you. Uh, cool. Um, let's see. Uh, Anything else on this one? And we'll move into we'll move into the infrastructure side of things. All right. Um, so, you know, we kind of had broken up. Uh, you know, here we had sort of broken up the gaps by feature and then infrastructure. So, um, on the infrastructure, the, it was it was a lot tighter, right? I mean, there was a couple like better better enterprise CA support, which, which as Michael pointed out. We, we're kind of hoping is is sort of more on the low hanging fruit side of things, um, but you know it was it didn't it didn't get the sort of broad ranking of priority as some of the others, but um, but unlike on the feature side where the cloud native OCI runtime really was like a standout winner uh, in terms of most important, here things were kind of more compressed. Um, but uh, this is this is kind of how it. It boiled down. So, again, kudos to, to Alan for bringing this up. Um, so this wasn't even on the list initially, and uh, it brought it up in the on that first meeting, and it came in second in terms of priority. Um, so, this is how it looks. Any any kind of initial thoughts? And same thing. I've got a slide for the top three that we can sort of you know dive into, um, but then. You know, we hopefully we'll reserve a little bit of time at the end if there are others that people want to talk about. Probably, probably a question for my uh, understanding. Um, with the first point, um, manager for Beehive, um, do we really only talk about the manager for Beehive, or do we also talk about? Uh, jail managers like for instance Bastille or IO cage and so on mm -hmm. uh, great question I might have re I might have sort of phrased that um, a little wrong I think it does extend to that um, I think it does extend to include that um, but I might have you know when I put VM it might have been uh, I might have it might have been uh, smarter for me to say jails. All right. Yeah, I mean, in, in terms of jails, um, not not sure, but but they all, at least to me, it feels like they all do pretty much the same thing. Um, and it would definitely be interesting to have something more uh, yeah, near nearer to base. Let's put it that way. Mm -hmm. Rick, yeah. I think you, you you remember the points I brought up yesterday regarding uh, uh, mm -hmm. uh, VM yeah. uh, managers, and the same applies to J managers, right? It's yeah. the same problem. There are handful around, only one maintainer, and and yep. all of the problems come with. Yep. Yep. Yeah. So these are the these are the points that um, Michael's referring to. So you know, there's there's Right, and I think, you know, one yeah, of the things that, yeah, that we've been kind of kicking around a little bit um, at the foundation is, you know, is is there a, would it make sense for there to be like a community manager who, because like at the end of the day, um, you know, as a community developed open source project, we depend on the passion of the people who maintain these things, right? To, 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 to do them. Um, but, but clearly like the, 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 the friction can emerge where there's, there isn't a lot of coordination. And so, um, and so as an end user that can then, uh, you know, result in, in, in exactly the situation that we're dealing with here. Um, so, uh, so I think, you know, this is something that, that we're, that we're thinking about how, you know, whether sort of if how the foundation might be able to play a supporting role um, to, uh, 
you know, in, in situations like this, see if there's a way to uh, consolidate, right? And, and not, not consolidate like, you know, oh, don't work on that anymore. But, you know, is there like, is there a way that we can sort of boost one approach, right? Um, yeah. But I- Yeah, it's, it's definitely like a, a thing the project has struggled with, even just in the documentation side of, oh, well, you know, here's five or six jail managers or VM managers or whatever. And then a user's like, well, how do I pick one? And yep. then, you know, they always pick the wrong one, it seems, for their use case or whatever, <laughs> uh, and run into problems. And so I do believe having, uh, being slightly more opinionated and having a, a default recommendation, uh, which is, like you say, not to discourage work on other ones because, yep. uh, and so on. But if we can put a little bit more of our effort behind one solution, then hopefully that solution will be, yep. uh, we get more traction just by being the default. Uh, yep. Of yep, course, I, like I just, yeah. you know, made all this worse by writing our own jail manager as well. <laughs> but ours does. Good well, maybe you made it worse. Maybe you made it better. Right. I mean, we don't right. know. Uh, right. Um, but we have boot environments for jails. Because, you know, uh, every problem is a ZFS shaped nail now that I have that. Hammer. <laughs> cool. Um, nice. Cool. All right. I don't know if there's a heck of a lot more. I mean, I, I don't want to cut the conversation short, but I feel like we feel like we got our arms around this one pretty well. It's, uh, it's definitely, you know, not something that I think we can solve, you know, this on this call or this week or, you know, this month, but it's absolutely on our radar and, um, you know, uh, we'll be we'll be tracking it and working towards a resolution, at least an improvement, right? Um, um, and then we didn't we didn't spend a heck of a lot of time talking about this one uh, yesterday, um, but I did mention that um, you know. As it relates to uh, you know how the FreeBSD Foundation can support you know can be of assistance to the project as it relates to infrastructure, things like this might be really good, valid places because they 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 are they're a fairly heavy lift. Um, they really only should be done once in a single way. Um, and, uh, and it'll, it'll benefit everybody. In fact, there's a really solid case that this and a few other things security related related aren't just like going to make FreeBSD better. They're going to be the difference between FreeBSD being able to be used by the government or not. Right. Um, so we are sort of kind of approaching that place. So, it, you know, this is an active conversation, but, um, and not something that, you know, I can commit to or even assign a timeline to at this point, other than to say, <laughs> um, you know, it, well, other than to say what I just said. Thoughts, and I, I keep meaning to do this. I, sh I need to do a global find replace, but it's really approach slash volunteers. Any feedback or thoughts on that? Um, Ed, I don't know if there's anything you would add or you felt like I captured that pretty well. Uh, I I think, you, I think you captured everything pretty well. All right. Cool. All right. Well, the, uh, oh, sorry. We have one more. My bad. Ports automation. Um, yeah, we really didn't spend much time talking about this one yesterday. Um, I don't, I don't think. Yeah, no, we didn't. Um, 
so I don't know if anyone on the call has any any specific thoughts or feels like this is something uh, that they would be interested in helping with or looking into. This is th something I brought up. Um, actually, I'd like to yep. describe how I, I uh, provide patches for ports. So basically, when I have a problem, I work out the patch on the port, make file whatsoever inside of the port, and then upload the patch and, and pray that the maintainer uh, will take a look within a week, two weeks, four weeks, a month, half year or so. And ideally, uh, maybe... Maybe most of the cases, I would say 60% the maintenance react, but uh, they still need to do manual work. They need to download the patch. They need to at least run it through Pudria whether this works. Did I do a good job uh, or I didn't I do a good job? And it will be very helpful um, either for the maintainers or at least for others who are waiting for a maintainer timeout. Okay, there is a patch provided and it's, uh, it completes all of our checks. It runs through, through a Pudria build or other checks and say, from a superficial point of view, this uh, patch looks sane, right? Even if the, sometimes, even if the patch builds or the system builds, it still might be flawed. But this requires, of course, a human intervention and uh, a review. Yeah, we've talked uh -huh. about this kind of concept before because if we can reduce the burden on the maintainer to, you know, five minutes for each. Bugzilla issue saying, all right, yes, here's somebody provided a patch. The testing says the patch works. Uh, you know, I'll green light this. Then they can do, you know, three to five patches an hour instead of one patch an hour. Yeah. And that mm -hmm. will get the backlog down with the same number of people a lot better. Yep. And I mean, so as we, as you know, Alan, I don't know to what extent you, you've like, how far those conversations have gone, but like, is is there a sense of what would be needed in order to institute something like that? Um, is um, there kind of well, like so, common best practices in the industry that might be adopted and applied? I think some kind of pre-commit CI would be the right way to go. In the mm -hmm. in the distant past, FreeBSD had a system called Red Ports, which was a volunteer maintained thing for making it easy for people to test changes to mm -hmm. ports and it would test that to patch against multiple versions of FreeBSD and, and so on. Uh, but when we switched to PKG, it needed a lot of work to catch up to that and that never happened. And there's gotcha. been, you know, people have talked about building, rebuilding something like that using Poudreur and mm -hmm. they would get so far, but it never anything that's got okay. to the point where you know, Michael can open a pull request against the ports tree on GitHub and it automatically will right. run some tests and, and tell him, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. tell the maintainer if, you know, they're good to just grab that branch and apply it and right. and move on, or if they still need to do a bunch of extra their own work. Correct. Correct. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, um, got it. So, um, ha do you like, do you know if this is like something that's been scoped? Like, do we know a level of effort on this or do you have a rough sense of that? Kind of outside of my view. It was Fair uh, last, I think the last time I was talking about it was like 2018 in okay. a dev summit. <clears throat> All right. Okay. Yeah. All right, so level of effort is a question mark, and so, but that mm -hmm. that this gives me something to go off of, um, and uh, um, cool. All right, that's helpful. Thank you. Any other thoughts on this one? It's it's some uh, some amount of work uh it's not super hard i would say to achieve but it requires a lot of steps uh, to to reach the level of automation at least from uh, asf for instance if someone creates a ticket in the jira of asf and provides a, a github pull request it will be auto linked into the issue all of the ci is being run and then the uh pr creator as well as uh, a mail list receives a notification, okay, this one has been uh, provided and uh, the, the build is fine. 
someone then can take a look. If the build fails, I am maybe not even interested in taking a look as a maintainer. And then the PR provider or the PR creator should take a look first before I take a look. So um, it, it's, I mean, I don't think that this can be easily integrated into Bugzilla because it does not have some mm -hmm. or, or GitHub offers. Mm -hmm. um, either it has to happen on GitHub lab or it has to happen on uh on gitlab with uh ci notes provided by the foundation or a free bsd on gitlab instance i don't see yeah. any other option here you mean github don't you yeah, gitlab instance gitlab as a, on github or a free bsd on gitlab uh, uh instance okay Basically, or if we're going to host it ourselves, it would probably be GitLab yeah. or something. Yeah. 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 I, 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 yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Good. Well, I mean, I think this gives us something to go off of anyway. Um, uh, so we've got six minutes left. Um, so we've gone through, and thanks again, very, very much, everybody. Um, the top three, are there other features that uh, we we want to spend any time talking about? So I'm um, still holding out hope that we'll get a, a, a contribution here. So we'll see. Um, we did spend a little bit of time uh, earlier this week talking about Kerberos. Um, we have not spent much time talking about this one, but we certainly recognize the importance. Joe reached out uh, to me with an email with a proposal to the Porter's death mail list of OpenJDK. I will try to review it tomorrow and uh, let's see what uh, what the out um, outcome is going to be. Sorry, repeat the first part of what you just said. Uh, Joe reached out to me today, oh, later this day, okay. and okay. Uh, uh, sent a draft proposal what he wants to send to the Porter's de ah. development menu list of the OpenJDK. Sweet, sweet, sweet. Okay, got you. Great. That's awesome. Um, thanks for looking at that. <clears throat> We did talk about this one. Um, you know, Samba is a great example of where we just really need to get better integrated with upstream. Um, mm -hmm. There's uh, there are some prerequisites to that, namely uh, GitHub Actions, um, and the prerequisite to GitHub Actions is support for FreeBSD and .NET. Uh, I've been sort of combing through issues and it looks like we're actually getting there on the .NET side. Um, and I just happen to have some old contacts of mine from uh, my days at Node.js who are uh, now over at GitHub. Um, and so I'm just trying to get myself organized so that I can approach them and uh, see what we can make happen here. Uh, I'd like to emphasize there is, I think the official hosting from the Samba team is on GitLab, on the public GitLab instance, and they use GitLab uh, runners to run their code. So maybe uh, beside, besides that, um, the GitLab runner for FreeBSD exists and uh, it maybe just requires uh, the actual nodes which will have the runner installed for GitLab, but you have to take a look. But nonetheless, the, the topic for GitHub Actions is still relevant to many other projects. Totally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I have, uh, I spent my morning reading about that. I, I, I get it now. Um, it took me a while, uh, but now I do understand. Um, um, okay. Uh, this one, honestly, I, it was, a, it came in, you know, pretty much close at the bottom and I, I don't even know where to start. I'll be honest. So unless anybody feels very strongly, we can jump to the other infrastructure. 
Um, so we got some thoughts here on this one. Um, so again, here kind of similar to the uh, actor directory DNS integration, Michael's offered to, um, you know, kind of convene a, a quick call. Um, so that's with me. Uh, sorry, I deleted that on all the other ones. Um, I think this is sort of a, I, I'm, I'm not sure, RE cluster admin type of thing. So Alan, you're going to be there next week, right? You're a BSD? No. Oh, you won't. Okay. Well, anyway, Ed, we can maybe think about, uh, so the, the big European BSD conference is next week and, uh, I don't I'll think this was a just to be my me, but it's oh. fine. It's fine. All right. Sorry. Give you, trying to give you credit, Alan. <laughs> a lot of great ideas. Um, yes. I, I could take that out. It, it, it doesn't I, matter. All right. Um, anyway, we can we can work on that. This one I know you did. Yes. I I did. Um, and I think this is sort of kind of in the same vein as the Zero Trust Builds. Uh, comment that I kind made of a, so this one's uh, the software bill of material so it's especially if you make a, a VM or appliance out of FreeBSD that includes yeah. a bunch of packages you want to be able to show all of the different yeah uh, especially open source applications that are included in it partly so that those can be matched against CVEs and so on totally yeah absolutely and I I, I think I'm uh, tracking on this one so um, uh, there may be uh, there may be some some ways that we can attack this. Um, so, uh, so next steps. Um, I'm gonna you know kind of go back and listen to the recording. Um, there were fewer people on the call yesterday, so there was you know good discussion. But I think I I, I kind of captured that fairly cleanly in my notes. Um, but I'm definitely gonna go back and listen to this recording, clean up my notes, publish my notes. Uh, or publish the minutes from the meeting. Um, for the next meeting, uh, I, I'm gonna be out. So I'm, I'm hoping that we can kind of set things in motion and have um, some work going on while I'm out, but I'm thinking that uh, it probably makes sense for us to target the first week in October because I'll be uh, traveling for work the next two weeks and then I'm gonna be taking a week of vacation. So um, be on the lookout for another uh, poll to find your availability. Um, you know, let's kind of keep having a think about, you know, whether any of these areas are, uh, there's any parts of them that you can help with. I've already taken down a lot of, uh, comments of people who can help and, and offers to help and specific ways you can help. So thanks for that. Um, uh, and then the next step is right, right, right now I've got, I've got my notes kind of spread over a bunch of documents, which is uh, really um, not not efficient. So we use uh, Reich, uh, which is a, just a project management software. Um, so I'm over the next couple of days going to be setting up project plans. So for any for any of the ones where it's like we have a really clear next step, uh, I'm going to set up a, a Reich project plan, and then you know anybody who has raised their hand. I'll add you to that plan. And then anybody who comes along and says, actually, Greg, I can help with that one, I'll add you, right? But that way, like there'll be a project with links to all the documents where we've you know, set milestones and tasks and assigned tasks to people. And we kind of know what needs to be done in what order in order to make progress. So that's kind of like my big next step here um, from a, project management standpoint, uh, in addition to this various uh, feature specific uh, action items that, that that we've talked about. And I ran over, I'm sorry, and I'm actually late for a meeting. So I've got to, I've got to go, but um, thank you. But thank, thank you all very, very much. Thank you. Yeah, I appreciate y'all. And, uh, you know, we're almost to the weekend. So enjoy. You as well.
Thanks, everyone. Bye. 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 Thanks, everyone. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye -bye. Thank you. Thank you.